Hello and welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Let's Defend platform. We are tackling another incident responder alert, that being SOC 160, Zbot application detected, event ID is 110, type is malware, and this occurred October 29th, 2021, 5.20 p.m. Or if you're like me, 17.20. 24 hour clock, gotta love it. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We have two posts at 192.168.10.62 apparently flagged for allowing something to go. Let's see, L1 note. When I examined the alarm, I saw that a connection was made from the 192.168.10.62 machine to the fast cleaner onenet URL address. I saw that the relevant request went through the proxy and firewall. As a result of the examination, it is seen that there is a C2 connection from the machine to the outside. And we actually have a zip file. And I'm not quite prepped for that particular spot yet, but let's grab and we will stick it in our self-contained samples directory underneath. Let's defend. We'll paste it. It gets dumped. And we're just going to go ahead and extract it with the super secret and secure password of infected because it's right there for download password colon infected. And we just find it again. And there it is. And we got a zbot.zip. Ooh, look at that. Double password protected. And then we end up with a file name that looks just like a SHA-256 hash. Look at that. Starting in A5 Bravo Bravo, ending in one echo. Foxtrot Charlie, which is exactly what we have here. Okay. So, not to spoil anything, but we have the suspicious file name, and we have the hash, we've got the sample, samples ripped down, our VT. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, that matches. Password stealer. Oh, excuse me. It's been a long week. I don't suppose this actually will sit there and make mention of anything. No, no fast cleaner, but okay. So we're fairly certain that we've got. Actually, let's just do this. MD5. Just for everything else. Uh, report search. Have you seen this before? Hmm. Okay then. Hmm. Funky monkey. Well, okay. I mean, the odds that 53 out of 69 AV engines are wrong are kind of bad, but let's run through the other steps just to find out. Uh, fast cleaner one dot. Okay, so let's look in the email. We have a nope ten post ten dot sixty two. 
Well, the date matches up. Yeah, look at that. Fast cleaner. To Steve. And look, fastcleaner1.net to download Zbot. And the second level zip file after this is zbot.zip. That's password protected as well. Okay, do we have threat intel anything for... So it looks like it'd be at the end of... Mosey M, raw. Well, we're not getting any sort of hashes or anything else like that. And I don't see the fast clean. Okay, log management. That was what, 192.168.10.62? Wow, okay. So we got three items. Quest timeout. Request timeout. All right, let's get the notes opened up. So, log management items four four eight and four four nine are one nine two one six eight ten dot sixty two. Trying to go out to one eighty eight two oh nine fifty two two thirty three. The noting time or request time out. Grab that, and this is item four fifty. Is this going out to six four two two seven seventy seven one seven or one four two? Port 80, and that, looking at the raw, is your address. Okay. So, what what's the significance of 188? Well, it is marked as malicious. Talos OTX. Yeah, we'll give IBM another round. Parasite HTTP CNC check-in. Netherlands. PS passive DNS doesn't go back to anything that we've observed thus far. Not so much anything now. We don't have anything even remotely close to 2021. Looks like all this fell off.
All right, so let's start reorganizing. Guess I've got another IP address to look at. Yeah, plenty of command and control stuff. Lots of bad stuff for the other IP address that gave the translation to the fast cleaner 1.net. This page is slowing down Firefox. Well, I mean, it is IBM. Well, this stuff is at least up to 2021, known as a scanning IP before it dropped off, what, December 14th? And that's all we have. The interesting thing is the order so let's put this around so no, um, twenty nine, twenty one at seventeen, seventeen. And that is twenty, so seventeen, twenty. So we've got them in correct order this time. Okay, let's find ten post. So one nine two one six eight ten sixty two ten post. Okay, and then we're gonna need Events for the 29th of October. So if I remember the encoding. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's denote browser history. Next one. And then I'll have to get these ordered. But that's neither here nor there. There's our fast clean. Facebook. And this better not be another Windows Server system. No web browsing on servers, damn it. Okay, so 
at 0503, we have datacamp.com. Building chatbot, chatbots in Python. At 1058, we have towarddatascience.com. Machine learning NLP text classification. Uh, at 1339, we have Facebook. At 1603, we have GitHub for our open sci and then finishing off at 1717 we have fast cleaner so that 1717 matches uh item 450 in log management so okay we're getting there just slowly we have no command history process Well, this is kind of the easy. <laughs> I mean, we kind of figure it was going to be running, but it says history. That is the only item we have. Right? Yep, so we got Adobe Reader, Chrome, from a consistent location, what we'd expect. USB arbitrator. Wow, semantic. Endpoint protection. Apparently, endpoint failure. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I'll be able to sit there and actually rip on them. I don't have to manage any of that anymore. Okay, yeah, so that's about it. Then, how we go network connections? And now the real fun begins. <laughs> Okay, let's start getting these recorded down, and we'll go from there. And then we can match these up. Hopefully with the rest of the traffic. Let me go back to 162 at 1058. Okay. So if we stack these in order, we have 503, which is the same time that we had datacamp.com, 1058, which we had toward, towards data science, which matches there. Facebook at the 157 at 1339, that matches. 1603, which matches GitHub. And the 1720 matches the request timed out that we saw in log, er, log management for firewalls and proxies for the network. Okay, well, first things first, we're going to sit there and have this host contained because we already know that this is bad. We're just building up evidence of course okay I present exhibit a <laughs> but let's let's spin the sucker up and we'll go from there so it looks like this so the story as it sits thus far so they got the the email telling them to go to fast cleaner one dot net slash zbot dot zip so they apparently downloaded it, installed it, and that's what generated the flag. Or the alert. Except now I need to format. Okay, there. I'm just basically just gonna copy and paste the message out. So they went there, they installed it, 
and then we have evidence in both the network firewall and proxy of the communications out and we also yes have it on the actual local box of course the interesting that thing that we're missing from the local network connections is the item at 1717 for the fast cleaner one dot net slash cbot dot zip so that would have been the six four two two seven dot seven seven dot one forty eight so it might be something else I have to bring to their or let's defend's attention in the feedback form just small inconsistencies but hey constructive criticism now we're still waiting on this but So from the sample, if we take a look at relations, and so let's see, contacted URLs with a 188, 209, okay, so right here, and we don't see evidence of the 85. Two years ago, she's marked. I mean, realistically, this one we wouldn't even really have to take a look at the system, I suppose. But I'd kind of like to poke around just to see. Steve's going to be in for a bad day. All of his passwords are going to have to be changed, and his temp host box is going to have to be taken down and burnt in holy nuclear fire. Or just wiped and restaged. <laughs> Apparently, Steve is a minimalist. And yet, I don't see the process sitting there kicking off. Or maybe they just give us a box. We got the suspicious file, but we don't actually have a path in the actual that first screen with the alert. Hmm. So I mean, it's there. But we don't have any sort of indication that the sucker's actually going. But that's okay. <sighs> so. So here's the question Do we have Sispon? I mean, realistically, I think we have all the information that we would need to basically say it's like yes Steve you apparently fell for phishing to malware we gotta change all your passwords now we gotta nuke and pave your box
when did this kick off? So it'd be 520. Do we have anything inside the PowerShell log? No. Okay, that's fine. Just figured we'd take a look before. Sysmon? So it's like if I go all the way down. Okay, so this is still beforehand. Diagnostic. So there's the the PowerShell scripts being run. System cleanup. So this must be more additional system staging beforehand. Scheduled scan. So working to make sure that everything is all good. So realistically, we want to look for anything closer to 520. So, okay. Chrome being installed. So we got the, the network connection out. We're getting a temp. That temp turns into zbot.zip. Google update. So that's the creation of the zbot file or folder. All right, so I mean, we got to be coming up here close to this thing actually getting or going live. So we've got it coming down kind of also to the whole aspect of the fact that we've got physical evidence that it's there. It's like, all oh, this is just built up straight to the point of, okay, come on, double click that, executable. Dang it. <laughs> Do it. Come on, run it. You could do it. Stream created. Okay, so we got the sysmon aspect, everything, and there's the process kicking off. Hey, look, and then there's system. DLL. So here's the question. Does that still exist?
Apparently not. Well, you know, it's just one of those things you could hope for. So we got a system that DLL. The process got termed. Query name to 188. So that's our aspect of the comms out, what we figure the C2. So they managed to capture that. Now we're now one minute past the event. DNS query yet again. Two minutes after. Get an RDP connection. AC proxy dot DLL. System 32 to see if there's a AC proxy. There is something that's been there for apparently quite some time. Does it denote the hmm. okay? Well, we're kind of past the time frame that we had. And then they were effectively done. Yay, Sisman. For the win. <laughs> There's no one either, huh? Oh. Oh, we tried. We have no indication that it's still running anything else like that, so... Okay. So we have the Z-Bot, we've got the two IPs, 
We've got the email. The domain. Okay, yeah, I think we've got enough. Maybe. Okay, start the case. We've done that. Uh, it is a legit domain thing. This is a true positive. Start the instant response. So it's a password stealer, at least according to everything that's sitting here. So password stealer translates into what? It's not a web shell. By that point, it's not a keylogger. It's not remote access Trojan. by ghost detection name for all malware involved in the mass in a mass of botnet. So Zbot Zeus. Apparently it's also an artist. Well, it's definitely in line with uh, all this old stuff. It came in via email. Password stealer, but... Sends gathered information by HTTP post. And of course, them selling all their stuff, their wares. <sighs> I'm going to say other, because it's not necessarily keylogger, but oh, I guess it just. <clears throat> That's cool. well, okay. I guess if I get it wrong, we said keylogger, so and otherwise it would probably be other, but uh, has malware been executed? Yes, we saw that by the sysmon, it was run phishing because it was sent via email. Uh, scope of risk. Depends. What does Steve have access to? Summarize. There. <laughs> I wouldn't say brand damage. It doesn't look like there was much of anything on that temp host box, so. But we can consider the credentials compromised, even though it was request timed out. Oh, I didn't even bother to look for scheduled. It's 
Actually, why am I going to do this the hard way? This is all just going to go away anyways. Um, was, is it live dot internals dot com? Hey, all right. Okay. Um, so I want. And then I want process. Okay. And okay, nuts to that. Downloads. I would like to run auto runs as administrator, and I would like to run process explorer as administrator. See if we can find a persistence mechanism that way. And then let us do the normal thing of go ahead and check it. We're going to get the EULA. We're just going to say yes. Let's verify image signatures. And let's go ahead and submit unknown executables. And then we will do the same thing for auto runs. As soon as I remember. Or does it, or is it scan options? Yep, okay, there we go. Yeah, 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 we accept. Your terms are acceptable. Basically looking for something to be time stamped for August 29th when this thing went. Uh, scheduled tasks. That's what we were just looking at. Clean up all the logs. We don't have anything there. SIL collector. Well, wait, if they manage to go through and actually extract the stuff, then persistence would be valid account because they would have the... Yeah, because if they'd been men, er, managed to actually export the info, they'd have access then. They'd have the passwords for the accounts. Privilege escalation, we didn't see it, but I believe that they were running as Let's Defend, which is local admin. It wouldn't be brute force. I guess, how does Zbot go about actually stealing the creds? Oh, so it literally does act like a keylogger for those particular instances, then, if it sticks with that. So, input capture, then. Does it need to be isolated? Yes, it's already been done. 
backup evidences, so it'd be the Windows event logs. We would grab a copy of the C users let's defend download directory to grab the C bot, but we've already got that here. Sysmon logs, but I kind of chalk that more up with the event viewer logs, Windows event logs. Um, I think it'd be about it. Eradication. Well, we're going to nuke the system anyways, so. Actually, since we're effectively done with this. So it's not actively running on the box. So they let it run, then killed it. Which is fine. And none of this stuff stands out, so that's fine there. Okay, let's just get this shut down. So we stop running the clock and cost them money for running the infrastructure. There we go. Okay, so how did the attack happen? Steve got an email from no reply at fastcleaner1.net. Click the link downloaded the zbot, so extracted it from the zip file, ran it, ran the A5 Bravo Bravo 96 Delta 731 Echo Foxtrot 58 Charlie Foxtrot 17 Charlie Charlie 579578 Alpha Bravo 89 Charlie seven Charlie four six Foxtrot two seven five nine eight two Bravo Echo eight Echo Bravo one three seven Foxtrot Foxtrot six four two six eight Delta Foxtrot Foxtrot one Echo Foxtrot Charlie dot exe Jeez Just should have just had it named Zbot <laughs> Or totally not zbot.exe, but hey. Okay, so we've got how that happened. How well the staff deal with it? Well, they picked out that it was there and that the C2 and stuff was going on. A note saying that they, they killed it. But, I mean, if you were to see C2 traffic, then the box should have already been uh, network quarantined. Uh, staff and management do differently next time. Uh, so more phishing awareness training for the end users, specifically Steve. He's now on the metaphorical crap list. The short list of people who I'm going to be paying very close attention to the next box that they get. Maybe take away web surfing privileges. Get them only to approve sites only. They are a problem child. But maybe I'm too harsh. Um, so let's see. Steve would have probably should have been told to sit there. Yes, you get weird emails, everything else like that to submit it. Uh, I mean, that's not just have this focused on the end user. Let's admonish whoever the email security vendor is for allowing that link through. <sighs> and then, of course, the EDR for allowing this stuff to kick off. Uh, corrective actions can prevent similar incidents in the future. Uh, tighter tuning on email filters. For this particular one, we just block anything involving FastCleaner1.net. Um, some better AV on the box. I mean, especially considering the fact... Well, then again, this is also several months later. We've got above a 75% detection rate. 
and because my math skills just suck terribly. That's a 76.8, so we'll just round it up to say 77%. Um, precursors or indicators should be watched. Odd uh, emails with links for supposedly things uh, claiming to protect your computer. Trying to think what else would we be able to go through and do. What if that fast cleaner one like is on metaphorical crap lists? Uh, so what is it? URL void? Oh, there we go. Let's see if it's on people's crap lists. Oops. I don't want to get rid of the brackets. Two months ago. At least as of two months ago, so that would have put it December. Apparently is not on anybody's crap list anymore. But it's also been how long since? A few months. Oh, well, yeah, that one. Two months ago, so yeah. As far as it's concerned now, it's perfectly fine. how it would have been treated more during the time of October, November would have been probably an interesting aspect, but uh, not going to be able to do much with that one. But like everything, I mean, email is one of the biggest attack vectors, which is why end user security awareness training phishing tests, everything else like that are so important. Although effectively you do reach the point where it's diminishing returns. Artifact time. Okay, so we have the URL. We're going to have two IPs. Oh, wait, we got an email sender, don't we? Yeah, no reply. Again, I'd, I'd love to take that apart, that email, uh, utilizing the headers. Just going to mark it phishing. Um, Okay, we have two IPs and an MD5. It's just not cred phishing, it's just malware phishing. So we need IP, IP, so where's our address? Got that. And here's our C2 IP address. And then we have to grab the MD5 of our C bot. Okay, this is what we'll just kind of copy and paste. Okay. 
downloaded, extracted, and run. Ran the exe. So I think it's fairly decent with the timeline. Oh, yeah. One eighty eight, two oh nine, fifty two, two fifty three, and I have port eighty. Highlight all that, finish the playbook. And we pull the trigger. It's a true positive. Then we'll see if we fail. Or if we win. Or if we split the difference. Oh, nice. Got them all right. I love getting things all right. <laughs> Wait. Except apparently I didn't get the credential access or the type of malware. But I got everything else. Well, geez, here I was expecting, it's like, oh. I mean, they're giving me all this little animated fireworks and everything else like that, and everything's perfectly fine. Nope. Oops. Crap. Okay, go back. Uh, there's the write-up. Get the link. Initial access. Which is exactly what we got. And then they've so they denote the, the one eighty eight for the IP traffic. And they checked Sysmon. That it was run, writes another URL to the disk, connection to 188. Contain the machine as precaution, yep. Yeah. Persistence, so basically the type of malware apparently is a fail. Well, so spear phishing as opposed to anything else. Uh, yeah, because we didn't really see it sent out to everyone on the 29th in regards to, hey, everybody, go ahead and go to fastcleaner1.net and download your free Zbot infection now. But... Okay, so with all that being said, that has been our SOC 160 ZBot application detected event ID 110 type malware for October 29th, 2021 at 1720 or 520 p.m. if you want to stick to the 12 hour clock. Uh, with all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.